I saw my girlfriend on a short video. She was wearing a white t-shirt and jeans, casually lying on the bed at home. Her left hand was tightly holding a man's hand, but those hands were not mine. On Monday at work, all my colleagues looked at me with knowing smiles. After the meeting, manager Ken patted my shoulder. Tiro, you're something else. Congratulations on your engagement to Hannah. As soon as he finished speaking, the whole office erupted in cheers. Soon, words like wedding candies and having kids filled the air. I was naturally surprised and delighted, and quickly thanked manager Ken for his well wishes. However, I couldn't help but ask everyone. Guys, I didn't post anything on social media, nor did I send out invitations. How does everyone know? My colleague, Yuki, immediately took out his phone and opened TikTok. You're a quiet one, but Hannah has already made it official. I looked at the screen and saw that my girlfriend had posted a new video with the backdrop of our recent trip to Sonia last week. Sunshine, beach, palm trees. She was wearing a colorful vacation dress. Under her beautiful, bright smile, she said, I made the most important decision. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Hannah is a short video influencer. Due to her outstanding pure and innocent looks, coupled with her self-taught photography skills after graduating from college, she has always created an artistic and fresh fairy-like image online, mainly sharing her own and her travel photography scenery. She prides herself on being a travel photography influencer with over 50,000 followers. However, during the year we've been dating, our relationship has never been made public. She said influencers lose followers if they are in a relationship, so I respected her decision. As a programmer with such a girlfriend, I was already very content. Hannah was also very curious about my work, often visiting me at the office discreetly, especially in recent months. The sudden appearance of a beauty in the company naturally drew the attention of my colleagues, and my relationship with an influencer girl became an open secret in the company. Today, as Hannah was preparing to make our relationship public, I thought it was unnecessary to hide it any longer. I couldn't help but tell everyone. Guys, actually, last week in Sonia, I proposed to Hannah. As soon as I said that, the entire office burst into cheers and everyone congratulated me. Ding. Most of my colleagues' phones rang. Oh. Hannah has posted another new video. Everyone, check it out. I couldn't resist taking out my phone and opening Hannah's account, eagerly expecting her to say my name to her fans. But what happened next stunned me. In the short video, my girlfriend was wearing a white t-shirt and jeans, casually lying on the bed at home. Her left hand was tightly holding a man's hand. But those hands were not mine. Hannah smiled sweetly and said, Hello everyone. I'd like to officially introduce my boyfriend, Nick. Then a guy wearing a matching white t-shirt greeted the camera. A female colleague exclaimed, I know this guy. He's so fresh and handsome. Also a photography influencer. He and Hannah are a good match. The female colleague, realizing she said something wrong, quickly covered her mouth. Now, the entire meeting room fell into silence. Everyone tacitly left the office or changed the subject. Yuki patted my shoulder and comforted me. Bro, stay strong, stay strong. How can I stay strong? I had just proposed. And my girlfriend announced to the world on TikTok that she had cheated on me. I felt so embarrassed and hurt that I wanted to smash my head against the wall. My dedication to Hannah wasn't just a romantic relationship. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. But now, what is Hannah doing? Could Hannah have some unspeakable reasons? Zero. I ran out of the office and immediately called Hannah, but she refused to answer. I then sent her a WeChat message, trying to speak in a calm tone, hoping to get an explanation from her. However, Hannah still did not respond at all. At that moment, I suddenly thought of her mother, Mrs. Lynn. In fact, I had met Hannah's mother a long time ago. I had bought her mother gifts and taken her out for fun quite a few times. The reason was simple. Hannah grew up in a single parent family. She told me that her father cheated on her mother, leading to their divorce during her childhood. She was raised by her mother alone, who worked very hard to support her. Mrs. 
Lin wore gold and silver and paid great attention to her lifestyle. Since she was going to be my future mother-in-law, I didn't mind helping out financially. However, I did wonder if Mrs. Lin really had lived a frugal life as Hannah had described. Whenever I questioned this, Hannah would comfort me, saying that once she became an adult, she decided to make money to support her mother and let her enjoy life. Although Mrs. Lin is just in her early 50s, she spends most of her time idling, sometimes helping Hannah with her studio and life, but mostly playing mahjong outside. Since our relationship began, I felt that Hannah's mother liked me a lot. Every time she saw me, she would greet me warmly, calling me hero. I believed that Hannah's mother would definitely be on my side, so I immediately called her. Sure enough, I soon received the comforting words I was hoping for. Oh, Tiro, it's not true. It's just a business collaboration. My future mother-in-law's response was to casual. In the video, the intimate actions and affectionate looks couldn't possibly be just business. I said painfully, Aunt Lynn, I actually proposed to Hannah during our trip to Sonia. We've come this far. How can she announce a fake boyfriend to the public now? However, this old mother just laughed coldly. I heard from my daughter, but I haven't agreed to let my precious daughter marry you. I was stunned. Was this the same enthusiastic Mrs. Lin who always grabbed my hand and called me hero? I couldn't believe it. I said, even though Hannah didn't explicitly say yes, she accepted the engagement ring I gave her. And I even put it on her finger. That's a separate matter. The voice on the other end continued mockingly. I could imagine Mrs. Lin's heavily made up face. What's so special about a ring? At least come up with a dowry of one million first. I consider myself decent looking. Standing at one, eight meters tall, and a graduate of a top university with a computer science degree. At 28, my monthly salary reaches 30 to 40,000. Originally, I should have saved up a sum to buy a house in this quasi first year city. But for this mother and daughter, I became a paycheck to paycheck person, being with Hannah. They had to eat the best, wear the best, play with the best, and stay in the most luxurious hotels during travels. Whenever I was with Hannah, I did my best to provide her with the best experiences, and all I wanted was to be with her. Mrs. Lynn knew well that I had become a paycheck to paycheck person because of them, yet now she was suddenly using this to refuse our marriage. Are there really such ungrateful mother and daughter in the world? Perhaps sensing my anger, Mrs. Lynn said, Tiro, you are indeed good, but my daughter is now a celebrity. Her social influence and earning power are way above yours. So, I advise you to act sensibly. With that, Mrs. Lynn hung up the phone. I was so angry I wanted to smash my phone, but thinking that Hannah might have some hidden difficulties. And since I loved Hannah, I couldn't believe that all the happiness and beauty we shared was just a dream. I held back my temper and quickly asked her out for dinner in the afternoon. Finally, she replied to me, but she refused, saying she had a live stream at dinner time and couldn't make it. Back at the office, I returned to my desk, took a big gulp of water, and tried to calm down. Then I opened TikTok and searched for videos posted by this Nick. I was so angry I almost spit water on my computer screen. Nick was also in Sonia the same day Hannah and I were there. He even posted a video. Moreover, he had been to many of the same places where Hannah and I had dated and traveled. What's more, the sharp eyed fans in the comments pieced together that Hannah and Nick's earliest interactions were a year ago. Comments like I'm shipping them. Nick and Hannah are such a good match. And they've been dating for a year now. Filled the section. I took screenshots of all these comments and sent them to Hannah, waiting for her explanation. Tiro, please come to manager Ken's office. At this moment, Ken, who was in charge of the company's HR development, called me to his office again. Recently, the company was looking to promote middle management, and manager Ken was in charge of this task. My projects in the past three months had all been successful, earning a lot of money for the company. When everyone heard manager Ken call me, they all looked at me with surprised eyes. And I was full of confidence. Yuki, who sat next to my desk, looked at me with envy and said, Brother Hero, don't forget us when you get promoted. I rekindled my hope for life, walked into manager Ken's office, 
sat down, and looked at this nearly 50-year-old diamond bachelor, who always wore a stern face. Today, however, he suddenly showed a rare smile and politely poured me a cup of coffee. I was flattered. The usually arrogant manager Ken actually poured me coffee. It seemed that my recent outstanding performance had been recognized by the company. Tiro, actually, I wanted to talk to you privately right after the meeting. You know the company has always respected talent. Manager Ken said, returning to his chair. This made me nervous again. But he quickly changed his tone, saying, But, you also know the internet industry is tough right now, and many companies are laying off employees. Hearing this, I immediately frowned, wanting to speak but was stopped by Manager Ken's gesture. Manager Ken said earnestly, Don't worry, you are a key employee of the company, and we still need you. However, we may have to transfer you to Group C temporarily. What Group C actually meant was the layoff group. It was a way for the company to reduce severance costs and optimize staff. Once you entered Group C, your benefits and treatment would worsen. And without projects to work on, you'd soon be forced to resign. No one had ever returned from Group C. It was like adding insult to injury. Frankly, I couldn't accept it. And my heart was filled with resentment. Coming out of manager Ken's office, I received a WeChat message from Hannah, just three words, let's break up. I lost my girlfriend, my job, my money, and my sincere feelings. I thought this was the way to be with Hannah forever, but she dismissed me with just three words. I couldn't understand how I had ended up in such a miserable state. As soon as I entered the company's restroom, I couldn't help but cry bitterly. As a grown man, it felt like I was releasing all the grievances and pain from my life. At this moment, my colleague Yuki patted my shoulder and handed me a tissue. Brother Hiro, don't be discouraged. We all know about your transfer to Group C. But it's not your fault. If you want to blame someone, blame your influencer girlfriend. My crying stopped abruptly. And I looked up with confusion, asking Yuki how my optimization had anything to do with my girlfriend. Yuki leaned in close to my ear and whispered. Actually, Many people in the company have seen Hannah frequently entering and leaving manager Ken's office. This was a shocking revelation. I couldn't believe it and accused Yuki of spreading rumors. But Yuki said that several people had seen it and that he could swear on his honor. If I didn't believe it, I could try to check the company's surveillance. He also said that a part of the company had long held grudges against manager Ken's management. Could it be that Hannah and her mother suddenly abandoned me because they found a new benefactor? The more I thought about it, the more everything seemed to make sense. My resentment and pain towards this mother and daughter grew deeper. In an instant, a thought of revenge sprouted in my mind. One month later, at the high-end cosmetics counter of a luxury brand in the city's upscale shopping center, I watched Auntie Lynn rudely apply a sample face cream provided by the salesgirl onto her face with her entire palm. No amount of makeup could hide the wrinkles formed by her vulgar smile. Hem. Not bad. This one suits me. Tiro, I'll take this one. Then let's go to the store next door to pick out some clothes. I've gained weight recently and have nothing to wear. I almost couldn't help but laugh at Auntie Lynn's commanding tone. But I maintained a serious demeanor and stepped forward to pay with my car. All right. Auntie Lynn. So. Is there really no hope for me and Hannah? Ah. Uh, you know. You're a good person but you just don't make enough money dot dot dot. Auntie Lynn sighed, hypocritically, while grabbing the sample hand cream and rubbing it on her hands. She continued, but, since you still know how to show filial piety, as long as you can ensure my quality of life in my old age, I might consider it. Auntie Lynn raised her hand and suddenly showed five fingers. I also held up five fingers, smiling. So you're saying Hannah and I still have a chance. Oh. You really are dense. What I mean is, I'll give you a discount of 50,000. If you can come up with a dowry of 950,000, I might consider it. Ha. Huh. So this mother is still selling her daughter, despite all my sincere feelings and efforts towards this mother and daughter. In the end, it was just a delusion on my part. This only strengthened my resolve for revenge, suppressing my anger. I continued to smile and said, but you know I can't come up with that much money right now. I'm buying you gifts on credit cards. I can't just beg on the street. I don't care what card you use. As long as the money comes in, 
There's a chance. Otherwise, no way. Just then, Auntie Lin's phone rang. She took it out and her expression changed. Oh. Sister Liu, I can't play cards today. It seemed to be Auntie Lin's card-playing friend. Although Auntie Lin and Hannah were not locals, they quickly integrated into the city. Soon, she had made friends from various backgrounds, and I had heard that Auntie Lin liked to gamble with money. And her stakes were not small. After Auntie Lin hung up, her face turned sullen. I approached her and asked with concern, Auntie Lin, why aren't you playing cards today? Didn't Hannah give you any living expenses? She did. But it's too little, Auntie Lin murmured. In fact, Hannah probably gave her quite a bit. Likely over 10,000 a month at times. Knowing Auntie Lin's greed, I took out my credit card, Dan said. Auntie, why don't you get a credit card too? You can spend money in advance. And even if you can't withdraw cash, you can buy gifts and offset the cost. It's like carrying an extra sum of money with you. Auntie Lin, who hadn't studied much and knew nothing about credit cards, was thrilled at the idea of getting money in advance. Is there really such a good thing in this world? I patiently persuaded. Yes, I can drive you to the bank to apply for one right now. But remember, Auntie, don't exceed your limit. Before I could finish, Auntie Lin grabbed my hand excitedly and dragged me out of the mall. No more talking. Tiro, forget the clothes. Just take me to get a credit card. And don't let Hannah know. Without further ado, I cooperatively took Andy Lin to the bank and helped her apply for her first credit card. One month later, Hannah's live stream was bustling with activity. After the hike from her publicly announced relationship, Hannah's followers surpassed 1 million. She now constantly live streams and sells products, earning money from her fans with a sweet and innocent persona. Due to her public relationship with Nick, she adopted a new persona fitting the current trend the sweet fairy sister and her young handsome beaufriend. They even made some vlogs together. Hannah not only gained male fans, but also attracted a large number of female fans. Her lifestyle and approach encouraged many girls to boldly pursue the woes they liked, regardless of age, and to embrace sweet older woman younger man relationships. Tonight, in her live stream, a fan with the ID Heartbroken Bro sent her the biggest gift. Now, all the fans consider Heartbroken Bro as the top fan. Hannah coquettishly smiled at the screen, saying, Thank you, heartbroken bro. With my company, you won't be heartbroken anymore. Love you. Moi. However, beyond the screen, I only felt disgust and nausea at Hannah's smile. Hannah not only managed her persona online, but in reality, she was always living her persona. To this day, she has not apologized to me. I am like heir to her. Our relationship and feelings evaporated like they never existed. I was just a cash machine during Hannah's transitional phase in life. She would never have guessed that I am heartbroken bro. Not only did I become her top fan, but I also became the leader of her fan club. I created a short video account specifically for Hannah's fan support group. Compiling and sharing Hannah's previous materials and daily life. Sometimes, I would even share exclusive photos and videos. Unknowingly. This account gained around 100,000 followers. I also created WeChat fan groups to interact with other fans. Fans said I must be a true fan because I knew so much about Hannah. Yes, every time I made a video about Hannah, I did it with tears. But after each release, I was filled with intense hatred. Hannah abandoned and betrayed me, playing with my feelings. A week later, I teased the fan groups with a special evening live stream attracting a large number of hardcore fans to join and watch. However, the fans started cursing as soon as they entered the live stream because it was just an ordinary office corner. But about 10 minutes later, the office door opened and closed. A pair of uniformed men and woman entered the office, hugging and kissing. Soon, the man started groping the woman, and the woman did not resist, instead moaning, Ken, you're so naughty. The fans quickly became excited, and the viewership skyrocketed. Some fans excitedly said, that woman looks like Hannah. No, that's Hannah, the voice, the figure. How could Hannah be with an old man? So disgusting. Just as the couple was about to get intimate, the live stream was shut down. I soon received a violation warning from the short video platform, but it didn't matter to me. My message had already been delivered. 
because the fan groups had already exploded with activity. Some sharp-eyed fans had taken screenshots and posted them on Weibo, questioning what they had seen. Soon, hashtags like Hannah Persona Collapses, Hannah and Can, and You're So Naughty were trending. Overnight, Hannah single-handedly confirmed her own cheating and betrayal, having an affair with an older man. In reality, Hannah did have an affair with manager Can. Although I was lying low in Group C, I hadn't given up on investigating everything. To my investigation, I found out that not only were Hannah and manager Ken having an affair, but they were also playing around in the office at night when there were fewer people. Once I figured out their secret meeting times, I took the risk to arrange this special live stream. I asked my colleague Yuki to place my spare phone in manager Ken's office and start the live stream. Sure enough, fate was on my side. This live stream made Hannah and manager Ken face the consequences of their actions. The internet was now in an uproar, with most fans angrily condemning Hannah. As for me, I suddenly felt calm, alone at home. I opened a bottle of beer and took a deep drink. I was still hoping for an apology call from Hannah, but instead, I received an anonymous text message. When I opened my phone, I couldn't help but let out a cold laugh. How dare you? Apologize publicly before midnight tonight and admit that you were wrong. This week, you can be transferred to group immediately, and you'll win the biggest prize in this year's year-end raffle. This message clearly had manager Ken's tone. To clarify, I was originally in Group B, now optimized into Group C. Group A is the department everyone dreams of joining. As for the year-end raffle, the grand prize is usually a car, but it's almost always won by the company's leadership a big scam. Now I understand that there's no such thing as fairness in this company. It's all manipulated, but I'm a programmer, making a living with my skills. I don't need your charity at all. Moreover, even at this point, these people have shown no remorse towards me. At midnight, they received no response from me. At 1 a.m., I saw Hannah's new Weibo post and a new short video. In the video, Hannah rarely turned off the filter, crying her eyes out, looking haggard. She repeatedly emphasized that she had been secretly filmed and that she was the biggest victim. As for everything in the video, it was supposedly a rehearsal for an office anti-sexual harassment play. She said she was preparing to transition and had signed a cooperation agreement with my company to film short office dramas. She claimed it was meant to surprise her fans, but it accidentally turned into a shock, and she was very sorry. She then brought up the difficulties faced by women in the workplace saying she hoped to set an example and encourage her fellow women to guard against workplace sexual harassment. She also reminded netizens not to believe the out-of-context secretly filmed videos and that she would use legal means to sue the heartbroken broke who broke her heart. To be honest, although Hannah's explanation was far-fetched, she spoke confidently and played the emotional card of women's workplace struggles. Nick also stood up, looking like a heartbroken boyfriend to support her and confirm everything as true. Quickly, many fans chose to believe her again. A campaign to hunt down heartbroken bro spread quickly on the internet, with trending topics like Hannah is innocent, Hannah's new attempt thwarted by secret filming, and to his heartbroken bro gaining attention. Hannah's follower count on short videos not only didn't decrease, but skyrocketed to 2 million. Early the next morning, I took a leave of absence from work, then I received a call from Auntie Lynn, who furiously cursed me. You scoundrel, don't interfere with my daughter's success. Don't ruin her future. Manager Ken has powerful connections. All the things you bought for my daughter and me, I'll send them back to you today. The more Auntie Lynn cursed me on the phone, the happier I laughed because I recorded the entire conversation. Thanks to Auntie Lynn, Hannah now had an incompetent ally. Around 2 p.m., I received a large package. When I opened it, I found that the cosmetics were either empty bottles or used packaging. The clothes and bags were either torn or old. This old lady was still scheming, not returning everything. Not to mention, the engagement ring I gave to Hannah was missing. I let things simmer for a bit longer. My heartbroken bro WeChat account had been buzzing all day with notifications. As midnight approached, I calmly opened my document and posted a prepared article on Weibo-an in the fan groups. The title was Let This Truly Heartbroken Boyfriend Talk About Hannah. In this thousand-word statement, I recounted my entire journey with Hannah, 
from getting to know each other, falling in love, to her betrayal, hiring Nick to play the fake boyfriend, and her affair with my company leader, manager Ken. Of course, my narrative was emotional but based on facts. To ensure my writing was compelling, I asked Yuki to review and edit it. In short, it seemed like a personal statement, but it was a meticulously crafted piece of revenge. Sure enough, the internet was once again set ablaze. This time, because I stood up and revealed that I was Hannah's real boyfriend, the public opinion shifted in my favor. Nick couldn't take it anymore and posted on Weibo, stating that his relationship with Hannah was purely business. He even shared photos of their contract and revenue sharing agreement. With key information blurred out, manager Ken, using a disguised account, tried to speak well of Hannah online and criticize me, attempting to steer the narrative but I directly posted screenshots of the text messages he had sent me. This time, both the disguised account and manager Ken himself were exposed by netizens. Manager Ken chose to remain silent. As the saying goes, every man for himself in times of trouble. However, even at this point, Hannah showed no remorse and made no attempt to contact me. The day after I posted my statement, Hannah's Weibo updated again, this time under her mother Auntie Lynn's name, claiming that Hannah had suffered from online harassment by her ex-boyfriend, had taken sleeping pills in the morning, and was now in the hospital for gastric lavage and rescue. It seemed that this mother-daughter duo was going all out. I was extremely disheartened, knowing that once we reached this point, there was no turning back, there was no way I would sit idle by. I decided to visit the patient in person. I quickly made my way to the hospital and found out which room Hannah was in. But as soon as I exited the elevator on the hospital floor, Auntie Lynn blocked the doorway. She started wailing and tried to push me away. Outside the hospital room, Auntie Lynn was hysterical, shamelessly accusing me in front of everyone. Tiro, how dare you come to the hospital? My daughter needs rest and can't be disturbed by you. If you take another step, I'll call the police. Auntie Lynn, Let's talk calmly. I just want to check on Hannah. While trying to pull Auntie Lynn to the side, I signaled to the man wearing a hat accompanying me to sneak into the hospital room. Everyone's attention was on me and Auntie Lynn, so no one noticed the man entering the room. Oh my god. Someone help. I'm being filmed again. Soon, we heard a young woman's voice from the room. Clearly Hannah. Given her lung capacity, it was evident she wasn't unwell. We all rushed into the room only to find Hannah lying on the bed, holding an apple in one hand and a tablet in the other. Watching a show, she looked rosy and completely healthy. On the other side, the man with the hat was Yuki, tightly gripping his camera and recording the scene before him. A nurse also walked in. This is a hospital. Please leave immediately. The patient needs rest. Or we will call security. In front of everyone. I pretended to be surprised and said, Hannah, didn't you have your stomach pumped? How are you still so energetic? The nurse, puzzled, saw it. Stomach pumped? This patient said she was uncomfortable after a gastroscopy and is resting here. By the way, you all need to leave soon. You don't really need to be hospitalized. And hospital beds are in high demand. Please make room for patients who really need it. In front of everyone, the mother and daughter finally bowed their heads in shame and embarrassment. I'm sorry, it looks like I misunderstood. I'll be leaving now. After saying that, I motioned for Yuki to follow me out. Tiro. As soon as we got downstairs, I heard Hannah's voice calling out to me for the first time in a long while. I turned around and saw Hannah running towards me. I signaled Yuki to step back. Now, it was just me and Hannah. It felt like we were back to the beginning. Hannah suddenly threw herself into my arms, crying and apologizing. I'm sorry, Tiro. It's all my fault. I hurt you. I've made money now. I'll repay all the money I spent. And we can start over. Okay. Hannah then looked up from my embrace. Her big, tear-filled eyes looking pitiful. For a moment, I felt like we were back to the old days. My dear Hannah, I sighed softly, reached out my right hand to gently wipe away the tears from her eyes, and slowly said, So you finally realize your mistake. Hannah smiled and said, Yes, Tiro, I know I was wrong. Promise me.
Don't let your colleague post today's information online. You can post a statement on Weibo saying we've reconciled and I can start managing my fin account again. Let's pretend none of this ever happened. Okay. My right hand, which was gently caressing her cheek, suddenly tightened and slid down, gripping her neck. My left hand joined in, starting to choke her tightly. Her smile froze instantly, turning into a hideous and terrifying face because of my grip. I even felt that this was Hannah's true nature. Hannah, even now, you're still trying to deceive me. In the end, you only care about yourself. You have no remorse whatsoever. Tiro, be strong. Yuki's reminder from not far away brought me back to reality. I quickly released my hands, and Hannah fell to the ground. Clutching her neck, she first gagged, then started cursing at me. Men are all worthless. How could someone like me end up with a toad like you? Even if you were reincarnated a hundred times, you wouldn't deserve a hair of mine. And let me tell you, Manager Ken will not only fire you, but as long as I continue to work with him, I'll become a millionaire soon. Ha ha ha. In my mind, I had already cursed Hannah a hundred times, but I knew I couldn't resort to such barbaric actions. I am a gentleman. She is a scoundrel. I couldn't dirty my hands for her. Daughter, send money to your mom quickly. At that moment, Auntie Lynn stumbled out of the hospital entrance, clutching her phone and pleading with her daughter. Hannah stood up, annoyed, and said to her mom, Mom, what are you doing? Can't you see I'm busy cursing this worthless man? Daughter, I heard everything you just said. I know you have money now. So, mom is in debt recently. Please help me pay it off. The creditors are threatening my life. Hannah asked, Mom, are you in debt to some of your gambling friends again? Auntie Lynn looked at me, then turned to Hannah and held up five fingers. You owe 5,000? Auntie Lynn shook her head. What? You owe 50,000? Auntie Lynn shook her head again. You can't owe 500,000. Can you? Auntie Lynn, looking a bit embarrassed, admitted. I opened more than a dozen credit cards, some using your name, and I can't pay them off right now. Hannah, enraged, scolded her mother. You can't even read. How did you manage to open credit cards? Auntie Lynn started crying again, pointing her finger at me. I was surprised myself, realizing Hannah's mother was so extravagantly wasteful, opening over a dozen credit cards and maxing them out. Hannah, now furious, began to curse at me and even tried to hit me, but bystanders stopped her. I stood still, not retaliating at all. I said coldly, Hannah, I just told your mom where to get a credit card, I didn't encourage her to overspend. So, I don't bear any responsibility. It's her own doing. Indeed, they are truly a family. Both mother and daughter are extravagant and spendthrift. Mom, it's okay. I don't have that much money right now, but we still have manager Ken. Hannah then took out her phone, trying to show off in front of me, but no one answered on the other end. She then took out her WeChat and tried to make a voice call but her whole body froze. She suddenly collapsed to the ground, crying. Auntie Lynn panicked and said, What's wrong? Daughter, if manager Ken doesn't answer the phone, we can go find him in person. Hannah, crouching on the ground and holding her head, trembled Dan said, No need to find him. He blocked me dot dot dot. Auntie Lynn also crouched down, crying and cursing at me, blaming me for everything. Yuki, seeing this, was ready to take more photos and videos. But I stopped him. I've had my revenge. Let's leave them a way out. Without looking back, I walked out of the hospital with large strides. Somehow, I felt refreshed, as if the path of the hospital was blooming with flowers under the bright sunshine, welcoming a new beginning. A year later, the door to manager Ken's office opened, and Yuki walked in with a pile of documents. He respectfully placed the materials on my desk where I was sitting in the manager's chair. Manager, these are the latest quarterly reports from Group A. I had returned from Group C. A year ago, after manager Ken was fired due to his scandal, I was promoted from a technical position to a managerial one because of my outstanding performance. I took over his position. I also promoted Yuki from Group B to Group A, making him the department leader. Manager, have you heard the latest about Hannah? 
Yuki, seeing me busy with the materials, added, Guess where Hannah went after her live stream account was banned. She and her mother fled to the Pearl River Delta, but they are still the same. Vain and irresponsible, Hannah hooked up with a wealthy factory owner. But it turns out he's married. She was beaten by his wife, and it made the local headlines. I saw it on my phone and forwarded it to you. No need. Those two are no longer my concern. I didn't look up and continued with my work. Yuki gave me a thumbs up and praised. Manager. You're amazing. Who knew you'd have so many brilliant revenge tactics? I want to learn from you. These aren't my tactics. I stopped working and finally looked up. Seeing Yuki's puzzled expression, I continued. The reason I succeeded is because of their own greed, which ultimately led to their downfall. I merely accelerated their self-destruction. When two people are truly open and sincere in their relationship, no external storm can shake it. Hannah just took advantage of my genuine feelings, misusing my true love. In the end, her own evil intentions led her astray, and she suffered the consequences. Now, I've achieved career success and earned the respect of my colleagues and family. I look forward to finding true love in the future.